in a place that has so much to teach us. It must have been such a difficult night in which the Lord, with his disciples, is about to enter into his passion. And he's at table with all of his apostles, the one who is going to sell him, the one who is going to betray him, the one who would deny him. He's also with the beloved disciple, with all the others who were there. The piercing of his heart was not only on the cross, but it began here, and at the Last Supper. Everything that he has taught is manifested. To love to the extreme, to give themselves totally to the last drop of blood. And he would begin here the new covenant that is not written on stone, but on our hearts because he first wrote it in his own heart. In his heart, it is not written by the finger of God, but by his options of love. There's two great acts of love that the Lord does in all of his dialogue with the apostles. The first is that he gives us the Eucharist, brothers and sisters. It is in this place that until the ends of the earth, even in the smallest places in the world, the Eucharist is celebrated. The greatest absence that the Christian people can have is the absence of the Eucharist. And that is why we have to have the suffering, the pain, so that there may be more religious, more priests, more missionaries who take the Eucharist to those who may cannot reach. Without the Eucharist, how are those souls sustained? How do they fight in their spiritual and material poverty? How do they fight against terrorism and threats? Brothers and sisters, a people without the Eucharist dies in the desert of life. And here the Lord, sitting in the midst of this darkness, of all of the sentiments that pass through his heart, he takes the bread and he breaks it so that it can be for you his body as in the same way that he is going to break his body what does he say this is my body sign of the new covenant for the salvation of all not just some brothers and sisters the Eucharist is not just for some he takes the chalice and it must have been amazing for the priest that is why when he says this is my blood because he is acting in persona Christi the new covenant is sealed in the love of Christ that does not sacrifice animals but his body made man but here also the Lord does something that moves me profoundly. And that is that he washes the feet of his apostles. Who washed the feet? The servants, the slaves. But what did Jesus say? I did not come to be served but to serve. And there comes a point of discernment for us. He who wants to be served, to 
does not look like Jesus. Here, he called us to donate ourselves in the same way that Jesus donated himself, to bend down and to wash the feet of his disciples. The Lord begins to wash the dirty feet. There is much significance in, in what is going to happen by the sacrifice of the blood of our Lord. And he begins to wash their feet. And who comes to say, you will not wash my feet, Peter? And what does the Lord say to Peter? If I do not wash your feet, you will not participate of my kingdom. And so Peter said, then wash my whole body, even my head, the two extremes, right? But the Lord needed to show Peter to love and to go healing, restoring, organizing his love so that he may be able to love to the extreme. Because here, St. John says that the Lord, among his own, he loved them to the extreme, to the extreme of the cross, to the extreme of the Eucharist. But the Lord, when the Lord washes their feet, brothers and sisters, the greatest thing that the Lord, I mean, try to think of that moment, the awe, the awe of the apostles that their master is on his knees washing their feet and drying them with a towel. It would seem to be that he was repeating what the adulterous woman was to did to him. She washed his feet with her tears and then dried it with her hair. Now Jesus washes their feet with water and dries it with a towel. And the Lord tells them, and he tells each one of us today, do you truly understand what I have done? What happens in, in Mass Holy Thursday? Do you truly understand what I have done? Do you understand that your Lord has come down and knelt down before you to wash your feet? Is it just one more story, or do you understand the profound depth of this mystery of love? That is a question of the day. Do we understand this mystery of love? You call me my teacher, your teacher, and so if we call him his teacher, that means that we are his disciples and his students. If they are his students, then he is their master, you're their teacher. And so Jesus tells them, well, if I, the master, the teacher, have done this for you, that I have washed your feet, then what must you do? Then you must also wash the feet of one another. What does this mean, brothers and sisters? How do we need to live? Here the Lord is teaching us that we need to love as He loves us, and that type of love where do we receive it? In the Eucharist. That capacity to love, we can perceive it in the power of the love of the Eucharist that has been given freely to us. But we have just received Him, and so we have just received the capacity to love as He loved us. And the Lord tells them, well, if I have done this with you, then what must you do? You must do it exactly as I did. One another. If I have served you, if the God must made man lowered himself to a slave, not to be served, but to serve, then what must his disciples do? They cannot look to be served, brothers and sisters. We are not Christians. 
so that others may serve us. We are Christians to serve. And I want to tell you all something. There's a tendency, especially in our contemporary culture, that when there is someone who does something bad, someone we don't like, when someone, what do we do? We hide ourselves from them. What did the Lord do here? What did the Lord do here? Where the one who, who was even going to betray him was here. The one who was going to deny him. He didn't tell them, this is for the rest, this isn't for you. No, brothers and sisters. We do not change according to the people and the circumstances. We must have wisdom to know how much we can give and when, according to the person, if they put barriers or not, but our hearts do not change. We are called to love and to love to the extreme. Each time that we retract, we leave an empty space. St. John Paul II used to say that evil takes up so much space in the world because Christians have taken a step back and has have allowed evil to take our place in history when we do not occupy our place. Who occupies it? Satan, his friends, his friends. We are friends of the Lord. And today, remember, we, we ask for that grace to be his beloved disciples. But we must take our place in the table of the Lord. And we cannot escape when he is speaking of things that are difficult. When we are surrounded by people that are not so good, like the traitor. Or the one who is going to deny him. No, we need to come close to the heart of the Lord so that we may hear the beatings of his heart. Brothers and sisters, but the most beautiful thing that the Lord wanted to teach us here after giving us the great gift of the sacrament of the Eucharist and therefore giving us the priesthood. The sacrament of the priesthood. Without priests, we, there is no Eucharist, brothers and sisters. We must cry for priests. We must cry so that holy priests may be multiplied in the world. The Lord already said it. If the pastor is dispersed, then the sheep are as well. We need to pray for shepherd. We need to pray for our shepherds so that there may not be empty altars in the world, but so that the altars can be multiplied because there are so many priests. But that the, the Eucharist is celebrated in the whole world so that the blood and the body of our Lord may be received. Here we must give thanks to the Lord that He chose men who were weak as we are so that He may give them the grace of this priestly consecration so that they can give us the seven sacraments. Be here, the Lord taught us to love, brothers and sisters. With a love that transcends us. A love that we are not capable of understanding. And our, our love is very small, right? And sometimes it becomes more narrow, sometimes it expands. It's like the palpitations of our hearts. It goes narrow and then it, it expands. But we cannot have a heart that is small and then big, small and big. No, we have to have a heart always open as his heart is because of his wound. It is not it is not easy, brothers and sisters. It is not. Because our heart is very narrow. And because our heart is stained by selfishness. But the Lord here, He teaches us to bend down and to wash the feet of our brothers and sisters. Even though some may be more dirty than others, ugly, 
with calluses. It doesn't matter how their feet are. It didn't matter how the apostles' feet were because they were his brothers. And that is why here we must cry if it is necessary. Because we, the disciples of Jesus, must learn to love like this. And because we must and we must ask ourselves, why do we conform ourselves with love so little? When here the Lord loves to the extreme. That is why the Lord to serve us, to serve us, had to be dispossessed of what? Of everything. And until we are not dispossessed of ourselves, of our excessive self-love, until we stop being the center of our lives and the center be the Lord, how are we going to be able to dispossess ourselves so that we can love others? We must dispossess ourselves of everything as the Lord did. Everything. A God who inclines himself before men. This this goes beyond anything that our minds could understand. How many people criticize us because we kneel before the Lord, before a statue, before a statue that symbolizes the person. Not is that we, we kneel down to the statue, but to the person that is symbolized by the statue. And yet, why do they criticize us? Because we kneel down out of love. When the Lord knelt down before man, a God who knelt down before man, who is man that you should remember him? Who is man that you should kneel down before him and that you should wash their feet? To do the job that is the lowest, the job of a slave, of a servant. And then he tells us, if you are my disciple, then you must do the same. This is the act that is the most profound act that we must do. I must do this to my brothers and sisters who I like and those who I do not like so much. I must be dispossessed of everything, of my selfishness, of my pride, my repetence. And I kneel down before this brother and sister and I, I wash their feet and I ask them for forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, if Jesus was dispossessed of everything, how could we not dispossess ourselves of everything? Are we willing to do the same thing that He did? The Lord renounces everything to teach us the life of a disciple, what we must do to renounce everything that opposes authentic love in me. And brothers and sisters, the most clear discernment of a Christian is service. When people tell me, I want to be liberated of an addiction, then go and serve. It is the great, there's no greater liberation than service. If in my house they don't understand me, then go and serve so that you do not think of yourself. If all Christians place themselves to serve however it was needed, because service is not just a proof of love and credibility of love, the authenticity of our discipleship, service is the clearest and most simple and truthful way that liberates us of everything that is an obsession to us, to get out of ourselves and to kneel down to serve the other. Here, Jesus being the Lord, doing that act in which he, what is he saying to his brothers? 
He is making himself a servant and slave. He is telling his brothers, I do not want to be greater, nor do I want to be better than my brothers. The Lord is saying this. And how many of us want to be greater or better than our brothers and sisters to have attention for myself? That they pay attention to me to be the one that is always first. When Jesus here says, I do not want to be first. I don't want to be greater than my brothers and sisters. I want to be your older brother. Not to be greater than his brothers, but to be the older brother who gives his life for his younger brothers. Brothers and sisters, today we are called to do the same. Not to seek to be greater or better, because we will never be better than others, because each one is irrepeatable. You cannot compare yourself to anyone. Your greatness is unique. You cannot be less or greater. You can only be who you are and to give the best of you to your brothers and sisters by serving them in the smallest ways. The only thing that I want, the Lord said here, is to love them. Because from here on, everything that I will do is love. He lived loving the three years of his public life and from the womb of his mother, but here he clearly shows what he wants to do for us. He wants to love us. Think that the only desire of his heart is to love others. I do not begin to think, oh, but him, no, because it's not worth it. No, not him either. No, just love them. You must love. You must love them. Yes, it is true that our love is not enough, that the, the jar of our heart is too small, and our love is not enough because it is so little. And it is so little because it is oppressed. It is incarcerated. Like in that hole that we just were, because our heart was not created to be small. It is incarcerated by ourselves. Because we put excuses to the heart so as to not love. We always have excellent excuses to not love because egoism our walls in our hearts pride is a, a wall our prepotence we are full of everything that opposes the expansion of our heart to love but here the Lord we must ask the Lord Lord My love is not enough. My love is so small. It's not enough. I want to love as you love, but I can't because it's not enough. I don't have enough. I need your love, Lord. We must tell him, I need your love so I can love as you ask me to love. And he has, he has told us, I have left you an example. Do the same that I have done. If I have washed the feet of my disciples, then you also must wash feet. If I have knelt down before you, then you must kneel down before your brothers and sisters. If I have held my brothers and sisters, then you must be the first ones to do so as well. And he, and we must provide for those who can't, and if you can't, then accompany them. But we must learn to love to the extreme. And we have reached 
we have come to the conclusion, Lord, that we need your love. And that is why we need to re receive the Eucharist every day, brothers and sisters, because we need his love to be able to love. To love as he has loved us. And today I want to ask you all a favor, but I'm going to plead to you for perfect service as we do this. I ask you to please stand up. And I ask you to please, in total silence, we are in this church of the Senate in which the Lord washed the feet. And, but for this to liberate us, this act is going to liberate us of our selfishness and is going to expand our hearts. I ask you in perfect silence, I ask you for obedience, please, in perfect silence, because if not, it is a wasted moment. Silence is what allows God to act in the heart. you Lord I need you I need your love to be able to love them to be able to love them If I have done this with you, then you also must do this with your brothers. If we did that, Lord, if I did the same thing that you did, right, my brothers, if you lowered yourself and dispossessed yourself of everything, Lord, teach us to where your love reaches to where your love reaches and you told us that you leave this as an example may this be the example of our lives Lord the style of our lives, Lord, not to want to be served, but rather to serve, because this is our God, brothers and sisters, a God who did not come to be served, but to serve. I need your love to be able to love them. For giving us this example and because you continue throughout history in so many ways inclining yourself before us and washing our feet thank you Lord we need your love to be able to love them.